This week on Wheel of Science, cannabis. Nah, actually, it's, it's space stuff. <laughs> yeah, Chuck, we're talking solar system stuff on Wheel of Science. Hey, everybody, I'm Chuck Nice, and welcome to Wheel of Science, the interactive show where we answer your questions about the universe. I don't answer your questions about the universe. The one, the only, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson answers your questions about the universe. What's up, Neil? <laughs> all good, Chuck. All good in the universe. It's Earth that's messed up. So, Neil, you beaming in from San Francisco, huh? Indeed. Yeah, I had an uncle who actually escaped from Alcatraz. No, you don't, and no, he didn't. Of, co of course I'm lying. Yes. All right. You ready to jump into our first question? All right, bring it on. Malik Maz wants to know this. Why does gravity produce elliptical orbits? Why aren't they perfectly circular? What's up, Neil? Well, all gravity really does is change the path that you would have otherwise taken through space. I'm trying to go in a straight line, and something down here has got some extra gravity for me. I end up curving towards that object. But if I have high enough speed, yeah, my, my, my trajectory will curve, but it'll, it won't get pulled into orbit. It'll just sort of send it in a different direction. And if I don't have enough speed, it'll curve me so much, I'll come in and crash. It's only in between those two extremes that you end up having any kind of orbit at all. And you can have all kinds of orbits, depending on what kind of speed you have and what your distance is. Comets, typically, have very elongated oval orbits like that. And uh, planets, as we think of them, tend to have uh, much more circular orbits, but they're still ellipses. But there's a little known fact that over enough time, the interaction between the object and the host, it could be a moon and a planet or a planet and a star, over time, the orbit becomes more and more circular in their interactions. And depending on how close it started and what the thing is made of, it, that can happen quickly. And you can end up with a perfectly circular orbit eventually. But otherwise, gravity is just something that changes your direction. That's all. So maybe that's why Pluto's orbit is different than any other planet. <gasps> Did I say planet, Neil? Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, its orbit is so elongated, it crosses the orbit of Neptune. There ain't no kind of behavior for a planet. I'm just saying. I'm joking, Neil. I'm joking. You don't want to go there. Are right, you ready for another question? Yeah, spin the wheel. Matt Harefield wants to know, why do planets orbit in the direction that they do? Or is it a 50-50 chance? An answer to that question was first posed more than 250 years ago. In, in mid-1700s, uh, Immanuel Kant, uh, the philosopher, uh, as well as uh, Laplace, a French mathematician physicist, proposed something called the nebular hypothesis. Because how else do you get all the planets orbiting in the same direction? Who, who ordered that? And it turns out if you have a gas cloud that is the parent object that becomes the star and its orbiting planets, and this gas cloud rotates as everything does in the universe, and it's out of that gas cloud that you make your planets and moons and other objects, then anything you make out of that gas cloud is going to have an orbit in the same direction around the host star. And the star will be rotating in that same direction. So this was an idea 250 years ago. Look, uh, later on, more thought invested in it. Computer models bears this out. And so that's how you can have an entire family of objects, everybody going in the same direction. And in fact, that so strong is that concept and that idea that if you find something orbiting the other way, you probably captured it later. And it did not have anything to do with the formation of the system itself. That's how you know who, who's, in the, who's got birthright to the system and who came in later. As usual, Neil, that was a little mind blow. That was just a little one, okay? That's, that, that's all I did to you? Hey, look, we gotta take a break, but when we come back, we're gonna take a look at some comments from the Wheel of Science group, and of course, take more questions. Don't go anywhere. Wix.com is an amazing place to make your own personal or business website. In fact, I built wheelofscience.com on Wix. It was super fast to embed videos, change fonts, and add background photos. Oh, that's nice. To create your own professional website, go to wix.com slash go slash StarTalk. Make sure you use that special StarTalk link. We also put it in the description. 
Send us your sights in the comments. Welcome back to Wheel of Science. You know what time it is. No, no, I don't. What time is it? Time to spin that wheel. Remember, all these questions come from the Wheel of Science Facebook group. Aaron Kennedy wants to know this. Could you please explain the significance of the heliosphere and how it's made? So the sun, as we know, is a ball of gas, but it's not just all stays that way. Some gas gets, like, ejected. And so there's a stream of particles that come from the sun that we call the solar wind. And you might have heard of the solar wind because it makes aurora. The particles stream and collide with our atmosphere near the poles and it renders it a glow. Very beautiful. Well, this solar wind moves completely through the solar system. And it goes beyond the planets, beyond the comets. And there is a point where this solar wind can no longer be distinguished from the medium that permeates between the stars of the galaxy. That is the actual edge of the sun's influence the sun sort of particle influence on its environment. And we call the size of that volume the heliosphere and the boundary of that volume the heliopause. And on September 12, 2013, Voyager 1, the intrepid Voyager 1, crossed the heliopause. And only then could you say it has left the solar system entirely. It's not just, oh, let's go beyond the last planet and now you've left the solar system. No, no. The sun reaches out far beyond. And there you have the heliosphere. And it's always there, by the way. And as we move through the galaxy, it can take on different shapes, depending on what's going on around us and depending on the strength of the wind at any given moment. So it could be a sphere, but it's usually a teardrop as the solar system moves as we orbit the center of the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. There you have it, Chuck. All right, Neil, that's the heliosphere, but can you answer this? What is the craposphere? <laughs> no, you can't, because I just made it up. It's my life. I got nothing for you on that. All right, now, on a serious note, you know, we did an episode about asteroids, and I actually saw this comment in the Facebook group comments. Uh, Ray Parker said this, I don't care or want to hear about asteroids. If we get hit, so be it. Nothing we could do about it. There are other things that are a lot more important than rocks. Neil. This is why you want scientists and engineers in your midst. Because when something that might render you extinct arises, is on its way towards Earth, they will, turn, they will look up and say, how can we prevent that? And they'll use methods and tools and ingenious ideas. And that can be the difference between you being alive saying you don't care and you being extinct where your thoughts then wouldn't matter to anyone. Hey Amen. Nobody can argue with that. I'm picking the reality where my president is Morgan Freeman. And now I have a question for all of you watching. Elon Musk announced the first commercial flight around the moon. Would you want to be on that trip? Answer the poll right now. I don't want to be on Thanks again to Wix.com for bringing Wheel of Science to YouTube. You can create a website with Wix in just minutes. They have templates on literally everything. Take a look at the template I used for WheelofScience.com. In less than an hour, I customized it so it would look and feel like our show. Look at this! This is amazing! Customization was super simple. They gave me a million font choices and every single element was customizable in just a few clicks. Look at that. That's a website. That's a Wheel of Science website. Check out our site and when you're done, make your own. Go to wix.com slash go slash startalk to make your professional website. You can upgrade it and add your own domain and get some really great extra features with their premium plans. Click on that link in the description and get started on your website right away. Also, share this show. Even if the person isn't from Earth, they need to see it too. As always, thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. You know I love you, Chuck. I love you too, man. That was weird. Hey, I'm Chuck Nice saying, until next time, this is Wheel of Science.